So Israel's in the process of pulling off a series of the most remarkable military successes in modern warfare that I can ever remember even reading about. Decapitating and perhaps incapacitating Hezbollah, blowing up the head of Hamas in Iran, killing the architects of the October 7th attacks and their mastermind, Yahya Sinwar, on Thursday. So what makes this success more impressive is that they've done it despite the objections from the West and most of all, Vice President Harris and President Joe Biden. Remember, they warned the IDF, don't you go into Rafah. The VP declared she's studied maps. Sinwar was killed in Rafah. We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation in Rafah would be a huge mistake. Let me tell you something. I have studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. And we're looking at about a million and a half people in Rafah who are there because they were told to go there, most of them. And so we've been very clear that um, it would be a mistake to move into Rafah with any type of military operation. They moved into Rafah because that's where the headquarters of Hamas is and was. Joining us now is the chairman of Urban Warfare Studies at West Point, John Spencer. John, thank goodness that uh, Bibi Netanyahu ignored the advice of this administration, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's where not only this mastermind evil person was hiding, but that's where the hostages were. That's where the tunnels, hundreds of tunnels supporting this death cult to survive in Gaza were found. Absolutely. Thank goodness Israel took its own security in mind and moved forward with that operation and successfully evacuated 90 plus percent of the civilians out of harm's way. So that you went to see for yourself how the Israelis were fighting. You wanted to see this urban environment. You said it's the toughest environment you've ever seen, worse than Fallujah, worse than Ramadi. And you were impressed with the efforts they made to avoid civilian casualties, although the rest of the world didn't get your memo. Right. No, I, I've been on the ground three times since October 7th, deep into Gaza, Khan Yunus, central Gaza. No military has faced what the IDF has, especially not us. And even any urban battle in history, never with this level of a suicidal enemy that's trying to get their population killed, who has 400 plus miles of tunnels, the concrete, the rubble, no military has faced this. And then also, no military has taken the steps that the IDF have, the measures to prevent civilian harm, constraining themselves, put themselves at risk, do all the notifications, all the evacuations, the daily pauses that the IDF have. I was blown away at what they're able to do under the conditions. And when you report it with all your credentials, you get blowback from the New York Times. They want to diminish what you're saying as if you're an Israeli apologist. So now that Sinwar is dead, there's a call for another ceasefire, release of the hostages. What do you call for? I call for the end of Hamas to allow Israel to get the job done and remove this cancer, which is the butchers of the Palestinian people. That's what we saw eliminated this week was the butcher of the Gaza people, because any civilian loss of life that has happened right. since October 7th is at the hands of Hamas. So I say get your facts straight on what is the realm of possible and let Israel finish the job. We just, uh, we, uh, we seem to run from victory for maybe a quick political exit. On the other side, taking down Hezbollah, the gold standard of terror networks that have created havoc in the region and even in Africa, we're watching Israel take them apart in real time. How much of that terror, terror organization is left? And how important was it for them to push back in the Biden administration who told them not to do it? Right. So, so they've been told for over a year just to let the Hezbollah rain rockets down for 80 to 100,000 Israelis to be homeless for over a year. No other nation would be asked to do that. And they have, in just two weeks, wiped out the Hezbollah hierarchy, the entire organizational chart. But there's still tens of thousands of fighters where they're not supposed to be under the United Nations, U.S. taxpayer money going to the United Nations to ensure this force called UNIFIL kept Hezbollah out of the border area, and Israel now has moved forward and discovered bunkers and tunnels that are never supposed to be there, literally 
giant bunkers with mopeds, mm -hmm. weapons, video cameras prepared to do another October 7th on northern Israel. But Israel has unprecedented, unparalleled in history, eliminating this terror organization, which is the strongest tentacle mm -hmm. of the Iran's proxy force. I want you to bring you to the last lap, and that is retribution that's certainly going to be coming to Iran. For the, since 1979, they've been an enemy of ours, killing our people, taking them hostage. There's a window open now with their bodyguards, Hamas and Hezbollah, flat on their back. Should we play a role in taking out their nuclear sites, their oil sites, their military sites? Well, we sure to hell said we would. We said that there would be severe consequences if Iran attacked again. We said don't do it twice, April and October, and they launched hundreds of cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, drones at another nation. So we should, we said we would be, so I think we should be, but that's a complex political situation, but deterrence has to be reestablished. People believe that this is escalation to, to, for Israel to defend itself against seven different fronts where it's being attacked. It's not escalation. It's trying to establish peace in the region and the head of the snake has to be dealt with in, in a way that they never try to do that again. It has to change their behavior. And what, do, and what do we take away from Israel's attack plan, the methods and the execution? What do you take away from it? I take away that Israel will do what it takes to defend itself, and we should be there with them, like we have been, to ensure that this Islamic regime, who vows to not only destroy Israel, has a clock in its downtown that to destroy Israel, but it also wants to destroy the United States, and we should be a part of ensuring that they don't think they can ever do that. You know, what John's referring to is by 2040, Iran says that they will destroy Israel. Uh, they never expected this type of retribution, and now there's reasons to believe they are shaking as they do a diplomatic uh, uh, fire drill to try to get some help in the region. John Spencer, thanks so much. Thanks, Brian. All right. Meanwhile, straight ahead.